like Stars Ambulance and the Canadian Cystic Fibrosis Foundation through monetary donations and our major supporters of local food banks. Hutterites are proud Albertans and proud Canadians that have been in Alberta for over 100 years. And we are grateful we live in a free country where we can live out our faith in our dear Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Premier Kennedy and ministers, we welcome you as our guest to our farm today, and we thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, don't you share, and uh, good morning. Thank you very much, Mark. Good morning. I'm going to have to practice my low German here. Uh, thank you very much uh, to uh, everybody from Jumbo Valley for the warm welcome. For myself and my colleagues, I'm happy to be visiting your colony, uh, joined by Alberta's Agriculture Minister Devin Dreeshen and Justice Minister uh, Doug Schweitzer, together with local MLAs Roger Reed and RJ Sigurdsson. Uh, thanks so much for, for the warm welcome. And I understand the kids are missing class right now, but this is a social studies lesson right now, okay? So you're good, you guys are covered. Um, I want to thank this colony in particular and the Hutterite communities across Alberta for what you do uh, to make community real, uh, to grow our food, to feed Alberta society, uh, and to do so much. Uh, here in this one small colony of just 80 some people, uh, they have, as you can see, a light manufacturing operation that produces uh, equipment for uh, lar large buildings such as this. They have a woodworking shop. They raise 30,000 turkeys. They farm 40,000 acres. They raise uh, broilers and they have dairy cattle. All of that coming from just this one relatively small uh, community. So. Uh, on behalf of the government and the people of Alberta, thank you for what you do. Thank you for feeding the rest of Alberta society. And Albertans stand with our farmers and our food producers, uh, who are an essential part of our society and our economy and our future. Uh, and that is why Albertans were so distressed to observe the invasion of your turkey barns that occurred here on September the 2nd. Now, some people have called this a protest. I don't think it was a protest. You do a protest, you hold a bunch of signs on public property. This was a, an illegal invasion of private property. This was a dangerous act of trespassing this was harassment of law-abiding, hard-working Alberta farmers who are following the laws and following the regulations, living an often challenging life to help feed the rest of society. And so we should not dignify this by calling it some kind of an act of, of, of legitimate protest. We believe in freedom of speech, and if people want to criticize farming, if they want to criticize poultry or livestock, they have every right to do so. But they have no right, no right to enter the private premises, private property of a, a farm, to invade it, to harass the farmers, to create a biohazard for the animals, and to violate uh, the uh, several laws in so doing. And, uh, and this, these are some people call these, you know, activists. I call them anti-farming militants, not protesters, but trespassers and bullies. I'm here today to say that the government of Alberta will not tolerate trespassing and bullying of our farmers. We will stand up for and with Alberta farmers in protecting the rule of law. And that is Thank why you very to, you're, you're very welcome. And that is why I am here today to announce that in the forthcoming session of Alberta's legislature, uh, our new government will introduce legislation to protect law-abiding farmers from trespass 
and harassment from uh, illegal bullies such as those who came to this farm uh, a month ago. We will do so by strengthening the Provincial Petty Trespass Act to specifically address trespass on agricultural land. We will increase penalties for breach of the Petty Trespass Act through the Provincial Offences Procedures Act, and we are looking at fines of up to $10,000 for a first violation, $25,000 for a second violation, and potentially up to six months of imprisonment for offences of this nature. We are considering provi amending provisions in the Animal Health Act and the Agricultural Pest Act to address the cost of biocontamination and biosecurity breaches due to unlawful entry. Uh, we will use instruments such as peace bonds, injunctions and trust funds to hold people accountable and to deter future uh, harassment of this nature. We will collaborate across the justice system to ensure enforcement and prosecution services uh, properly to address agricultural concerns. Uh, and uh, we will appoint a dedicated Crown Prosecutor for agricultural offences to ensure that they are pr uh, properly pursued. Uh, we will ensure that there are legal repercussions for individuals who misrepresent themselves in order to gain access to farms and capture images uh, to discredit operators. Uh, and uh, more measures that we are studying, Ministers Schweitzer and Drieschen uh, will be providing details now uh, and in the weeks to come. Uh, I understand that uh, the turkey farm operated by uh, the Jumbo Valley Colony uh, is closely inspected by the Canada, Canadian Food Inspection Agency, uh, has uh, biannual audits from the Alberta Turkey Board, and has a strong, very strong compliance record. Uh, there was no reason for this farm to be targeted, but that's not really the point. There's no reason for any farm to face harassment, intimidation, trespass, and this kind of illegal biohazard. Uh, and if people in the public have legitimate concerns about animal health and safety or potential violations of food safety and agricultural regulations, we encourage them to go to the appropriate authorities. As Minister Drieschen will underscore, we in Canada and in Alberta have the world's highest standards for regulation of the food chain, and that includes poultry operations such as this one. So we don't need people acting like vigilantes through trespass, uh, intimidation, and harassment. Instead, what we need to do and what we are conveying with this commitment to legislative action is to stand up for and defend our food producers, our agricultural operators, our farmers. Most of us are only a couple of generations, most of the people in the cities are only a couple of generations removed from a family farm. And I ask those uh, folks in our city communities, our urban communities, to remember their grandparents and their great-grandparents who made great sacrifices to operate farms, to, to feed their families, to produce food for the rest of society. That's what our farmers do uh, all across Alberta every day, just like this Hutterite colony at Jumbo Valley. So we will be making it clear that we will not allow uh, these kinds of intimidation tactics uh, to disrupt our province's farms and to harass farmers. Disrupting the lives of hardworking Albertans, harassing families around their own homes, this is not something that the government of Alberta will tolerate. It is not something that the Alberta public will tolerate and we'll be encouraging a new, stronger culture of enforcement from those responsible for enforcing the laws to prevent it. Our current system isn't doing enough to protect our producers, their families, or their businesses, and we're going to fix that. Thank you very much. I'll now turn it over to Attorney General Schweitzer. Very well said, Premier. And over the last month, it has been my privilege to travel this province. I've been as far north as Fairview, 
I've been to Drayton Valley, Cheadle, Coaldale, talking to Albertans about the challenges that we're facing in rural communities. And at every town hall that I went to in Alberta, what happened here in Jumbo Valley came up time and time again. Albertans conveyed to me their clear desire to have property rights respected, to make sure we stand up for our farm communities. So today you're seeing a first step of our government to listen to Albertans, to make sure that your realities are reflected in the policies and laws here in Alberta. So it is my great honour to work with the Premier on this policy, also with Minister Dreeshen uh, on this here. We need to make sure we send a clear signal to people that would trespass on property that there are consequences to taking that step. And this step here of making sure we have a penalty of up to $25,000 for an individual, as well as going after the organizations perpetrating this and organizing and facilitating it, going after them with fines of up to $200,000 as well. We're going to make sure we send a clear signal that property rights are to be respected in the province of Alberta. Our farmers are not targets. We stand with you, we've heard you, and we're going to make sure we take decisive action. Thank you very much, and I'll turn it over to Minister Dishon. Well, thank you, Doug, and, and thanks everyone for coming here, and, and thanks to Jumbo Valley for, for having us here and, and for hosts. And as we saw, it's a, it's a world-class facility that they have here. Uh, the, their barns are, are world-class, and they do such a great job uh, organizing it and keeping their animals safe, especially here in southern Alberta where it, it snows. It apparently snows in feet and not inches. So it is, it is important to have uh, great facilities here, and, and they, they do a wonderful job here at, at Jumbo Valley Colony. But ultimately, Alberta's farmers, they work hard to maintain the health of their animals and to minimize the sources of stress. And protesting trespassers, that, that doesn't help. And that's why we need to recognize that farms are more than just a business. Farms are homes. It's where families not only raise livestock and crops, but also children as well. And so farms need to be viewed as, as what they truly are, which are, are family farms. And farmers have a right to live and work without fear of aggressive protesters trespassing on their land, disrupting their lives, or putting their animals at risk. And again, as Minister Schweitzer was talking about on a, on a tour around the province, I had my farm freedom and safety consultations, and something that uh, came up time and again was that people in rural areas didn't feel that Alberta's justice system actually has their backs. And that is something that we're planning to fix. And as Premier Kenny said, uh, Minister, Minister Schweitzer and I are, have been exploring options to deter activists from invading farms and more effectively punish those that actually do. Fines, legislation, we're looking at all options are, are on the table. And in particular, in, in my ministry, we will amend the Animal Health Act so farmers impacted by biosecurity breaches can recover their costs and so that trespassers and protesters breaching those biosecurity protocols can be fined $15,000 for their first offence and $30,000 for any repeat offence and again plus up to a year of imprisonment. And I'm pleased that Minister Schweitzer will also be taking strong action to protect producers with tough new amendments that target trespassers. But most importantly, as the Premier said, our farmers and the public have made it clear that they expect a stronger culture of enforcement. And it's not a joke, it's not a stunt, it's not entertainment when these out-of-control activists trespass on farms, disrupt people's lives, damage businesses, and put the health of animals at risk. No one should have to tolerate that sort of attack. We are going to make sure that that kind of attack is treated with the seriousness that it deserves. Now, between weather, trade issues, commodity prices, farmers and ranchers have enough to worry about. People trespassing on their land, putting their animals and their business at risk, shouldn't be one of them. So that is why we're committed to fighting for Alberta's producers and to ensure Alberta farmers and ranchers grow and succeed. And I look forward to the coming months of how we can promote a justice system that actually protects law-abiding citizens. And we'd be happy to take questions from the media now. And again, thank you guys for, for coming out here today. Keeping, keeping your reputation back. Yeah. We're happy to take your questions. Premier, obviously there's an example of um, activists maybe something fun here, but are there others in Alberta that you're worried about? What, what else is you're aware of other are, are these proposed the, the current activists that were here, they were, they were proud and were promoting that this was just the start, this was the tip of the iceberg, that they were planning on more attacks 
across Canada and, uh, and especially here in Alberta. So there are, you know, that the current group that did what they did, as well as others that we've, you know, whether it's PETA or other organizations that do this type of activity. We want to make sure that Alberta is actually a, a strong province that if they're going to do this type of action, it's not going to be done here on Alberta farms. Yeah, this was uh, not a sort of improvised small one-off. Um, there were dozens of people involved. I've been told that uh, they had pre-positioned cameras, uh, so apparently they did a break and enter, it's, it, uh, it is alleged, before the actual event occurred. And uh, they, uh, they had a very detailed strategy and indicated that this was the, not the end but the beginning of, uh, of future trespassing um, uh, harassment actions of that nature. So that's why we're frankly laying down the law now. Uh, I, I'm not aware of, of any particular incidents in, in recent years, but as I said, they've expressed an intention to continue with this harassment. Yeah. I was told yesterday that no charges have been laid in this particular incident. Do you have any more information on that? I'll defer to the Minister of Justice. Uh, again, uh, we don't have any further information uh, regarding charges. We, we do work closely with the RCMP and our police officials across Alberta. It's for them to investigate right now. I'd refer you, refer you to the RCMP for further questions regarding whether or not they're going to be pursuing charges. One thing that we are trying to convey, though, to our law enforcement officials as well as our prosecution is that rural considerations need to be taken seriously. We need to make sure that our justice system in Alberta respects rural Alberta, make sure that the, and the culture that we have in our rural communities, which has been turned on its head over the last four or five years. So we're making sure we do everything we can to make sure our justice system re reflects the realities of rural Alberta. And is Alberta the first province to implement this kind of legislation? <clears throat> to the best of my knowledge, although Ontario is examining uh, similar legislation, and uh, I know that Minister Schweitzer's officials are in contact uh, with their counterparts in Ontario uh, to uh, compare notes as we uh, develop uh, similar legislation. Uh, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if other like-minded provinces follow suit. Uh, why is there a need in Alberta for better law enforcement to protect the agricultural Sure. Um, le deux, excusez-moi, ça fait un mois, il y a eu une invasion illégale des militants dans ce ferme, ce qui était une menace à la sécurité de notre nourriture et aux santé publique et des animaux. C'est la raison pour laquelle notre gouvernement a agi pour uh, uh, proposer un projet de loi pour imposer les peines plus sévères pour ces attaques contre nos, nos, nos producteurs agricoles. Il faut avoir la solidarité avec nos producteurs agricoles. C'est la raison pour laquelle nous mettrons en place ces mesures-là dans la, la, la session de la législature de cet automne. Sorry, I can't do that in low German. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't think Andrew needs my help, but I want to pitch in. I ran on a commitment to Albertans to do everything we can to defeat the Trudeau government because uh, of its attacks uh, on Alberta, because there are tens of thousands of Albertans who are unemployed in part because of Justin Trudeau's anti-Alberta, anti-energy anti policies. And uh, so I've been asked by the Conservative Party to go and pitch in down east. Uh, I have a, a, a lot of connections there, and I'm, I'll be helping out some candidates uh, who are co per personal friends of mine. So I'm just doing my part uh, to pitch in uh, to the effort uh, to elect a national government that will respect Alberta, uh, respect our values, and that will strengthen national prosperity and national unity. Uh, Justin Trudeau wants to balkanize the country by allowing provinces to block pipelines, as do his prospective minority government coalition partners, Jagmeet Singh and Elizabeth May. Well, we can't, Albertans cannot tolerate the risk of a liberal minority government backed up by the Greens and NDP that would potentially kill the Trans Mountain pipeline and allow other provinces to block uh, pipelines. We also need a federal government committed to repealing the No More Pipelines Law C40, C69, the tanker ban C48, repealing the carbon tax, and respecting the West, respecting taxpayers. I also would like to see a Prime Minister of whom we could all be proud. A Prime Minister who doesn't constantly embarrass himself here and on the world stage 
a Prime Minister doesn't have to constantly apologize for his, his own conduct. And I know Andrew Scheer personally. He's a, he's a leader of whom we could be proud, and I'll be making that point to my friends in Ontario this weekend. Well, some people, I, I don't think there's any tension. Uh, I, I read a comment somewhere saying there was a fine line between the right to protest and uh, the expectation of uh, respect for. No, no, the, the fine line is it's the farm gate. When you invade somebody's property without their consent, when you break into their buildings, when you violate agricultural regulations by creating a biohazard, when you harass people who are simply going about their jobs legally, none of that constitutes a legal or legitimate protest. All of that constitutes uh, trespass and harassment. There are multiple obvious uh, uh, offenses uh, in that kind of contact, both, both of an administrative, regulatory, and potentially criminal nature. We'll leave the criminal part to the police, but we'll be clarifying in, in our, within our statutory authority that you can't break in, uh, trespass, harass, and, and, and violate egg regs with, without, uh, you know, you can't do that with impunity. If you want to go and stand on, on public property with a bunch of signs, if you want to write op-eds and make arguments and uh, deliver speeches and uh, hold a rally in front of the legislature, condemning farmers, I won't agree with you, but you have a right to do it. But breaking into a farm is, 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 not, is not a legal protest. And in regards to farmers and the mandatory entry-level training program for Class 1, is there exemptions being considered for that? Well, the previous NDP government did bring in a, an extension before the application of those new rules uh, for farmers uh, and uh, school boards. And uh, all that's happening is that Minister of Transportation, McIver, is consulting broadly with all interested stakeholders on that, that extension. So uh, those consultations are ongoing. All right, thanks very much, folks. Thanks for coming out. Mr. And, Premier, yes, sir. Yes, you may. We are glad that somebody has the backbone to do what is right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, but I wish they would have. Thank you very much. Thank you.